Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to BSV TV. I'm your host, Sir Toshi, and on this show, we'll be defending the one and only truly genuine Bitcoin. The Bitcoin that Satoshi Nakamoto designed in his white paper as a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system for the world. Let's get the disclaimers out of the way. So all the statements that you hear on this show are opinion and must only ever be taken as opinion. They are never to be taken as any form of advice, family, financial, sexual or otherwise. And on that note, let's sit back, relax, have some fun and enjoy the show. Get paid for your content in Bitcoin and set your own fee on Streamanity. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I wasn't asked why I'm convinced Craig is Satoshi. Um, I posted on, on Reddit. He signed in my presence uh, the private, using the private key from block one, block number one, the very first mined Bitcoin block uh, on a computer that I'm convinced had not been tampered with, on software I'm convinced that had not been tampered with, a message of my choosing. At Enchain, we've just funded a number of universities doing, so far, a test up to one gigabyte because it validates what we've already done independently. We've tested up to 380 gigabyte blocks. We have tested 1 million transactions a second and transaction sizes up to 20 megabytes. Super complex scripts, basically ones that can run operating systems. That's basically all of global commerce times about 50. On top of that, we can have complex scripts. On top of that, we can scale each of those transactions 1,000 times, which effectively means about a billion transactions per second, which means we can then have all derivatives, all complex trades. That means high frequency trading. It means everything that happens globally. Is the market that effectively BSV is going for, is that global e-commerce, which is currently valued at $29 trillion? No, that's just more. Cool. Buy and sell Bitcoin instantly at bsvgravity.com. And you can now book and pay for your winter holiday at skibsv.com. Oh, good afternoon, everybody. How we doing? Let me just uh, sort this out. It's almost perfect. Come on, let's see it. There we go. Beauty. Right. What an exciting day it's been. Uh, looking at the markets and uh, it is an exciting time. Oh my goodness me, look. Look at Qualcoin. <laughs> so 17,500. All these people piling in. They're like, oh my God, fear of missing out. It's Bitcoin. We told you, you shit coins are shit. <laughs> like, oh my God, all this money just piling into something that is worthless. But you know, this is this is sheep factor. That's what this is what Blockstream want. Like its number go up, it's not gonna last. You know, it's, uh, yeah, we know it's not going to last anyway. But anyway, we'll get into that in just a minute. Let's crack on with these figures. This is the strength of the system, the health of the network, the crypto forecast. Transactions, Bitcoin absolutely killing it as it normally does. 64.6%. Transactions on B crash back to where they normally are on 1.4. Core cool coin hovering around 35 Block size, it uh, looks like uh, CoreCoin is just beating us at the moment, but we're probably data banking, never mind. And uh, B crash with 2.8% of the block size. Let's see who's been mining what. So, we'll, uh, first of all, let's play spot the biggest block on B crash. We've got 224. Is that it? <laughs> 351. Good grief. 351. That is the biggest block they've got. What a joke. And our uh, cool coin just simply hasn't moved. But here we go. Look at this straight away. Tala's mind. A 22 megabyte block. <laughs> 22 megabytes. I mean, that's just hilarious. And like literally none of these shit coiners give monkeys. Like they're just literally, it's, it's number go up for them. They have no idea. No idea. Uh, let's see. Any other, any other big blocks on there? Oh, 12.9 megabytes. Oh, looks like it's, it's the 22 that Teller's just mined. Looking good. Looking good. Uh, Bitcoin hash rate by network. And let's look at Bitcoin. So we've still got Hathor on there, chomping away at smaller blocks, preventing all the shit corners from jumping on there. 
Tau with nearly 30%. Huobi's on there. Again, don't know too much about Huobi. Via BTC, just a little bit. And we got uh, SV pool, uh, F2 pool on there. All right, fair dues, fair dues. Uh, and let's just have a quick look at this uh, B crash uh, network upgrade to see what's, uh, see what's going down here. Yeah, the Bitcoin network has split. Uh, the bitching chain is currently 305 blocks ahead. <laughs> oh my god. There's Amory looking a little bit droopy. Uh, hash rate by, but I mean, the hash rate is still there. So there is another chain in existence um, at the moment. So this is, this is bitching, uh, which is, looks like B crash that we just looked at on the overall chart. <laughs> And this is Anne Marie. Uh, oh dear, oh dear. So there are. It looks like there are like other mining pools mining. That. I don't know whether they're like little ones or they're one big one. But either way, there's only that and via BTC. Whether they've just been negligent with the hash rate, whether they're just not keeping an eye on things, maybe they're utterly, utterly incompetent, or maybe someone's just having a laugh. They're just like, you know what? There is another chain that's into existence. Does this? Uh, uh, is this going to screw people up with prices? Are they going to get confused about what is Bitcoin Cash? What's Anne Marie going to do? I mean, that that is actually really quite funny. Look, the chain has actually split. Look, a a um, Bitcoin ABC. <clears throat> so it looks like uh, yeah, via BTC, unknown, Binance, Bitcoin.com. So uh, yeah, I mean, I think there's confusion over over. Uh, over what chain belongs to what um, at the moment. I mean, what there's an, there's an unknown miner that's mined uh, a 1.5 um, kilobyte block. So that's like a 1.5 megabyte block um, in comparison to what a B crash is normally like. So don't know what's going on there, but it is it is really quite funny, really quite funny. So let's have a look at the shitcoin market. Let's see what's going on. Oh, we'll have this on uh, in uh, USD for our friends across the pond. As myself, I need to start looking this is literally looking at this in US dollars like everybody else does. But being British and not really knowing too much about trading initially, obviously, you know, I was just doing my thing and uh, looking at it in my own currency. But we have got cool coin. This is going to be the talk of the town. Like, you know, um, peaking up over uh, 17,500, 5% in the day. It's FOMO, ladies and gentlemen. It's people piling in. 15% up on the week. And it's 50% up on the month. So Michael Saylor is going to be absolutely over the moon with this. Spunking his pants, patting himself on the back, congratulating himself, telling his shareholders that he made the right decision and everything else, telling all those doubters and eggheads, see, I told you, I told you. That's what's been going. That's what every shit coiner is going to be saying to themselves. But we know it's an absolute pile of shit. Like, I'm, I'm sure people's amygdalas are triggering watching this, getting stressed out. Oh, I'm missing out, I'm missing out. You're not missing out. It's not Bitcoin. It does nothing. It's fundamentally absolutely worthless and totally flawed. It's a Ponzi scheme with people piling their money in because no one is selling. Because everybody thinks it's Bitcoin. They have no idea. <laughs> Learn more about why Bitcoin SV Chain is considered more handsome. <laughs> I do enjoy the humour in Bitcoin and the witticisms. It is intelligent humour and exceptionally funny. I, I laugh every day uh, looking at this. Like, on, honestly, I, uh, I, I, re I really do. Um, so, yeah, let's, uh, let's get into what I want to talk about today's topic which is centralized control. I mean, this is absolutely shocking um, in this YouTube clip that I want to show you about this flash crash that happened on the May the 6th, 2010 at 2.45 precisely. All right, here we go. This, this was the uh, documentary. So I shall remember to unmute my oh, mic. Here we go. Play that back at the beginning so you get an idea of uh, what we're going to be looking at. Uh, so I found this absolutely, uh, absolutely sure. fascinating. That, to him, is the mystery. We don't understand these things. Fraid not. It is a fraud. Absolute fraud. 
Someone did this. And they're just like, look, this makes no sense. Initially, you know, it looks like a, a, a mistake. It is never a mistake. Someone orchestrated this and the regulators know about it. So check this out. I've done the research for you and I know where I'm gonna start this next clip from. This is absolutely outrageous. Here we go. From around here, spot on. That'll do. The sure. SEC report was skip published identifying like the cause of the flash crash. And let's see what the regulator did about it, shall we? $4.1 billion. That's a lot of money. That is what caused this flash crash. It is not something that we don't understand. It is not something that's a mystery. Absolute bollocks. And it's a cover-up. It's a massive cover-up. Dell and Reed Investment Fund based in Kansas City. Would you believe it? There we go, fascinating. So it was the Missouri River and the railways that allowed the cable to be laid along the tracks or along, along the track route that can transfer information. And that's why this became a financial hub. Look, and this is the regulator making excuses for this company that blatantly did it. Unbelievable. This stuff. He's about to be proved wrong. See, he, so the regulator is saying, oh yeah, we're, we're looking at these things uh, in one minute blocks. And this guy is about to completely debunk the regulator there saying, if you look at it in one minute blocks, you're never going to see this. Just listen to what he says. What he says. So the regulator is saying that when you're looking at it on the millisecond time frame, the information doesn't tell you much. This is the regulator saying this. That you'll dilute it 10 to 1 if you look at it, if you're looking at it on a second basis. A so if you're looking at it on a minute basis, you would never see it. Which is what the regulators were looking at. I mean, what the hell? So they're asking about the SEC report. When she said SEC report. Is it nonsense? And he's basically going to say, well, yeah, you can't tell jack shit from it. Here's see, he doesn't even want to get in trouble by mentioning who the buyers were. But it's clearly rigged. 150 millions worth in a millisecond. <sighs> look at that. Look at where that last dot was at the bottom. Right at the bottom of the crash. Look. And so, so initially they've been selling at the tops. And now look at that. The market tanks right at the bottom and boom. They, they buy it right at the bottom. Unbelievable. Or, or yeah, it is one firm. She's right. This guy just doesn't want to mention names. Oh. He's just saying, look, the SEC would know this. And the SEC is claiming that they've been looking at these on minute intervals because, the, because otherwise nothing makes any sense. It's an absolute cover-up. No. He gets time, price, and size. And he said the SEC gets names. Uh, plus, Unbelievable <laughs> excuse is about to come out from the regulator. They know. The bunch of absolute crooks. And this They're the regulator. Like saying, oh yeah, so uh, the level of detail that we're allowed to go into is the, uh, is the level of uh, detail that we're allowed to go into uh, legally. You're the regulator. Who else is going to get access to this information? Unbelievable. And look at him nodding. He's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Just, just fob him off. Keep my lips tight. They are protecting someone. The regulator is covering this up because people are being paid off. And they're being paid off by people who have got access to the money supply and you literally stuff in each other's pockets. There is no one policing them. Because the police are basically paid by those who print the money. And those who print the money are clearly friends with these guys. The whole world is rigged. See, look, and now he's regretting doing it because he's basically, uh, you know, opened up Pandora's box. You know, and the people who are involved in this... They don't want him to know who they are, and he doesn't want to name who they are. It's an absolute fraud. Unbelievably, uh, unbelievably disappointing. And again, it all comes down to centralized power. If you control the money supply, you pay the military, you pay the police, you pay the regulators. You know, everything comes down to the issue with being people having centralized power. You know, uh, and so there is one other thing that I just want to uh, uh, talk about as well on YouTube. And I wasn't aware of this um, until I sort of researched this. But about, about a year ago, there was an issue with literally babies going missing, missing in Serbia. 
Here we go, look, Serbia missing babies. Serbia missing babies. I mean, this is, this is absolutely unbelievable. Well, it's not unbelievable. They're stealing babies, like newborn babies that are being born. And they're giving them, you know, death certificates with no reasons for, for the death. I mean, honestly, it's, it just, it makes me sick. Right, well, I've uh, been going for 44 minutes. Been a good one, guys. Hope you enjoyed the show. Same time tomorrow. And as ever, be aware, take care, stay safe out there. Joy given. Catch you later. Buy BSV.live, the best place to buy Bitcoin SV online. Get paid for your content in Bitcoin and watch the full episode on Streamality for just 20 cents. Go to www.satoshi.tv. See the link in the description below. Bitcoin, one world, one chain. Yeah! One vision.